In a show of force to Pyongyang, four F-22 fighter jets flew over the Korean peninsula on Wednesday. Two of the four will stay deployed in South Korea. KBS brings you an exclusive interview with a former North Korean construction site manager for insight into the regime's foreign currency raising schemes. And senior North Korean official Che Yong hae has again disappeared from public view, giving rise to several theories from bad health to being purged. Hello and welcome to News Today on KBS World. It's Thursday, February 18th. I'm Luke Clary. The success of the UN Security Council sanctions on North Korea hinges on China's enthusiastic participation. Encouragingly, American foreign affairs officials say that they detect a change in China's stance. Meanwhile, the White House has announced that President Obama will soon sign the UN sanction plan. Deputy National Security Advisor Cho Tae-yong, who is visiting the U.S. to attend a high-level ROK U.S. strategic meeting, told reporters at the airport that the talks about the U.N. Security Council sanctions against North Korea are moving along smoothly. He explained that the latest Security Council meeting aims to hammer out a resolution much tougher than the ones in the past. As for the possibility of change in China's stance concerning anti-North sanctions, Deputy Advisor Cho said that China and the U.S. share the big strategic goal, so the two sides are working toward that direction. China a high-ranking source in the American Foreign Affairs Circle also revealed that Washington is sensing a change in Beijing. According to the source, the fact that the U.S. and China continue to hold talks over the North Korean sanction issue is proof that the difference between the two sides is narrowing. In a show of force to Pyongyang, four F-22 fighter jets flew over the Korean peninsula on Wednesday. Two of the four jets will stay deployed in South Korea as a continuing deterrent to North Korean provocations. With a roar, four F-22 Raptor stealth fighters, considered to be core weapons of the U.S. Air Force, sweep across the skies of the Korean Peninsula. They change directions and circle around. The fighter jets flew in formation with the South Korean Air Force's key asset F-15Ks and the USFK's F-16s performing joint missions. The F-22 Raptors departed from a U.S. forces base in Okinawa, Japan, and landed in Korea's Osan Air Base after the flight mission. This marks the first time in five years that F-22s were deployed to the Korean Peninsula. Their last deployment was in 2010, after North Korea's torpedoing of the South Korean naval vessel Chanan. The flyover is aimed at sending a strong warning message to Pyongyang following its recent nuclear test and long-range missile launch. The U.S. maintains an ironclad commitment to the defense of the Republic of Korea. Two of the four Raptors did not return to Okinawa even after the mission and will reportedly stay on the Korean Peninsula for the time being. Seoul's shutdown of the Gaesung Industrial Complex is meant to send a message about the government's resolve to cut off sources of funding for North Korea's nuclear and missile threats. Meanwhile, Seoul has recommended South Korean nationals shun North Korean restaurants operating around the world and will ask the international community's cooperation on banning the employment of dispatched North Korean workers. This is a sewing factory in Tandung, China. Dozens of women working here are from North Korea. How old are you? How old are you? As of 2013, North Korean workers were sent to work in only 16 countries, including China and Russia. But now about 58,000 North Koreans are dispatched to roughly 50 countries. South Korean intelligence authorities believe that North Korea earns 250 million U.S. dollars through its workers overseas, and 90 percent of the earnings go toward developing nuclear weapons and missiles and purchasing luxury goods. 
Seoul is looking at these dispatched North Korean workers more closely in order to address human rights exploitation and to block North Korea's revenue streams. Bulgaria and the Czech Republic have cited their legal obligations as EU members and have already stopped hiring North Korean workers. It's been revealed that about 90 percent of the wages earned by North Korean workers overseas go to North Korean authorities. KBS had an exclusive interview with a North Korean defector who served as a high-ranking official at a North Korean construction site abroad to give us deeper insight. Let's take a look. Kim Tur Su, a North Korean escapee in his mid-40s, worked as a manager at Southeast Asian construction sites for 10 years. North Korean laborers dispatched overseas to earn foreign currency worked over 15 hours a day but were forced to give 90 percent of their wages to the ruling Workers' Party. Approximately two million U.S. dollars annually were funneled to North Korean authorities from Kim's workplace alone. In order to dodge sanctions on the North, these funds went to Office 39 of the Workers' Party via third countries, such as Macau, Singapore and China. Kim said, however, that party officials in charge of security and supervision indulged in gambling and drinking and even received bribes from workers. Senior North Korean official Che Yong hae has again disappeared from public view only a month after being reinstated to power following his stint in the political re-education program. His disappearance at such a sensitive time has given rise to several theories, from bad health to worse, being purged. North Korea's Workers' Party secretary Che Yong hae appeared in public in mid-January for the first time since he was sent to be politically re-educated for three months. He flaunted his regained status and esteem by reading North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's congratulatory message. There had been speculation about his deteriorating health given his overly skinny right leg. However, Che kept accompanying Kim Jong-un and showing up for public events. But Che again disappeared from public view after welcoming back Kim Jong-un at Pyongyang Station on February 7th. He was absent from the party which celebrated a successful missile launch given by Kim Jong-un, a central party meeting marking the late Kim Jong-il's birthday, and even a visit to the Kumsusan Palace of the Sun where the body of Kim Jong-il is kept. These events should have been attended by Che if he were still a close associate of Kim Jong-un. His disappearance has renewed various speculations about his fate, such as declining health or being ousted again by Hwang byung seo Kim Yong-chol, or other military hardliners. More and more emergency medical centers are closing down in rural areas. More rural patients have to go to hospitals in distant cities for emergency care, losing precious time. We bring you a closer look at this growing problem. Paramedics hurriedly move an elderly woman who injured her hip joint in a fall. They must get to Chechen, North Chungcheong province, which is 50 kilometers away. The transport time alone will be about 40 minutes. It's because the only emergency medical center in Tanyang closed down in April last year. Two out of 17 emergency medical centers in North Chungcheong province were shut down last year. Government aid such as the deployment of public health doctors was suspended. The reason was their failure to bring in a sufficient number of medical staffers to meet requirements. This is because medical professionals are reluctant to work in rural areas, leading critics to voice the opinion that standards to designate emergency medical facilities in rural areas must be changed to reflect this reality. It also appears necessary to implement additional emergency medical helicopters to quickly transport patients within the golden time for treatment. 
Arc clams are in season on the south coast of Korea. Production has surged from last year, bringing clam farmers impressive profits. Let's take a look. It takes about an hour by boat to reach this clam farm from Yeosu, South Chola Province. Farmers are busy moving just caught arc shells to barges. After carefully sorting them, the farmers wash the clams. Arc shells are gathered between November and May of the following year. They are in season during this time of year. Arc shells are larger than cockles and have dense lines on their shells. This year, the production of arc shells surged five-fold compared with last year, thanks to a large number of seed clams that were scattered on the farm as well as the species' high survival rate. 올해 여수시 관내에서요 지금 한 15,000 톤 정도 생산이 될 예정이고요. 금액으로 환산하면은 한 90억 정도 생산될 계획입니다. This year, 10 kilograms of arc shells are shipped for approximately nine dollars and eighty cents, which is lower than in previous years. Each clam farm gathers over 10 tons of arc shells daily and supplies them nationwide. This ocean delicacy is one of the most sought-after winter foods among gourmands. Just about everyone in Korea knows some of the poems written by Yoon Dong-ju, but few actually know very much about his personal life. The first movie on the renowned poet's life has made its debut, and we bring you this and more in our entertainment news segment. <laughs> Yun Dongju was known as an introverted writer. Yun began to write poems to describe the tragic reality of his home country after his elder cousin Song Mong Yu, who grew up with him, joined an anti Japanese independence movement. Although the two took different paths, they never stopped supporting each other and eventually arrived at similar fates. This love story is about three couples. The amusing story of how they build romantic relationships with the help of social media strikes a chord with many viewers. It's a welcome return of the domestic romantic comedy, which poignantly blends humor with serious emotions. A man accidentally dons a dress. And from there, he becomes embroiled in a roller coaster of emotions that he had never experienced before. Set in the 1920s, this film depicts in a calm and subtle way the fears and anxiety of a man who decides to undergo gender reassignment surgery after he realizes his sexual identity. When savvy customers get involved, products once considered undesirable can see a sudden resurgence in popularity as consumers come to appreciate their hidden value. We bring you a look at products like baby abalones, squid mouse, and ugly persimmons, which have become sought-after items. Baskets of abalones are being unloaded at this warehouse in Wando Island, South Jola Province, a region known for quality abalones. These abalones are known as baby abalones for their small sizes. They're about one-fourth to one-fifth the size of ordinary abalones and cost about two-thirds less. Fishermen used to throw them away or take them home to eat themselves, but these abalones now have a different fate. The 
what were once considered rejects have become a lucrative source of income for these abalone farmers. This beer pub is packed with customers. In the kitchen, a cook is stir frying something that looks quite unfamiliar. Squid mouths often get discarded together with the intestines and eyes. But do squid mouths actually taste just as good as the squid tentacles or other meaty parts? Today's last destination is a persimmon orchard in Hadong, South Gyeongsang province. Too ugly or small to be marketable, these less than perfect persimmons are kept separately to be used for other purposes. Thick slices of persimmon are dried in a food dryer for about four days to make delicious and healthful dried persimmons. Even unwanted or ugly ingredients can take on real value when savvy customers get involved finding their uses. Now we'll take a look at the markets, followed by the world weather. And that's it for this edition of News Today. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you again at the same time tomorrow. Goodbye.